hypertension. This is one of the conditions that has been asked several times and I keep ignoring it because most of you don't understand that all those chronic conditions that are called the metabolic syndrome hail from one source. This is the insulin resistance. Anyway, today I'm going to answer this question about hypertension once and for all. Now, there is a difference between blood pressure and hypertension. Blood pressure is basically the force that blood exerts on these walls. Of, this is a blood vessel, so this is where this is the internal part where blood is flowing through. So that force that blood exerts on these walls, that is what we call blood pressure. So if this force is so high because this blood vessel is narrow, that is what we call high blood pressure. If this blood vessel opens up and then the force of blood is low, then that is low blood pressure. But hypertension is basically a chronic elevated high blood pressure. So that means your blood vessels are so stiff and narrow that there's always a high pressure of blood flowing into these blood vessels. So the heart is totally struggling to pump blood through these blood vessels that are narrowing. We will come to the cause of that narrowing. But you see, as your heart pumps blood through these blood vessels, you're actually also exerting some type of strain to the heart muscles, and specifically the left ventricle. So it will start uh, growing large because this is an adaptation. So the reason why you're having that enlarged heart is because of this. You're actually causing a problem of narrowing in blood vessels, and the heart is struggling to pump blood through these blood vessels that are narrowing every other time. And therefore it is straining and as a form of adaptation the heart muscle starts growing bigger and that's just accommodate that pressure so that it pumps blood so the heart is actually trying to save you now the reason why you're narrowing these blood vessels is because of what you're eating don't be lied to about cholesterol listen to this keenly when you consume sugar in all forms sugar is very sticky substance you know if you pour some tea on your table then you leave it, that tea has sugar, and you leave it for some time. When you come back to touch that table, it's quite sticky. That is the same concept that is happening in your blood vessels, and that's why for people who have high blood sugars or diabetes, they do a HbA1c test. Why? Because that is a test that measures the amount of sugar that is attached to red blood cells, which is called glycation. So when this red blood cells attach the sugar, they become sticky and they stick on the surface of blood vessels. Now, once it sticks here, it starts attracting other cells because remember, blood is flowing through that vessel. So it starts to attract other cells. And now this will happen to be a lump because cells are attached here and they keep on growing. Now, this is actually exerting as some form of strain to the blood that is going through this blood vessel because it's a bump now. That is one form of narrowing of the blood vessel. Another one, sugar is very inflammatory to this blood vessel wall. So it causes that endothelial damage. Once it causes that damage, there will be a whole mesh to try and repair this blood vessel now this is a problem because this will start causing a thickening of this blood vessel and once this wall starts to thicken the blood vessel starts to narrow that is what we call atherosclerosis okay so it's thickening and narrowing of the blood vessels and guess what is happening the blood pressure is increasing because the amount of force that has to take blood through that blood vessel is going high so sugar is highly uh, inflammatory to your whole system now once you have this uh, uh, in, inflammation to the blood vessel wall, the liver sends cholesterol all the way to this by packaging it to LDL, the low density lipoprotein, which basically is a carrier for cholesterol and carries cholesterol from the liver to this inflamed site. So it's not a type of cholesterol, I've said it before. So it's a carrier of cholesterol towards this inflamed site. Now, when it comes to this, that cholesterol is actually coming to help you heal from this inflammation. But when they do a blood test, they will tell you cholesterol is high and you are at risk. But they don't tell you to drop the sugar that is causing inflammation that causes cholesterol to come in to solve this problem. So actually cholesterol is coming to salvage this situation. But they blame it on cholesterol and uh, hide the sugar. They don't want to talk about the sugar. So unlearn. Sugar is the one that is causing you atherosclerosis, not cholesterol. Again, so this is one form of, this is one cause of hypertension. Another cause of hypertension is in your kidneys. So sugar kills your kidneys in a process called, in a process called uh, nephropathy. So it destroys the nephrons in the kidneys. Now, once sugar kills the kidneys, 
you don't now have the ability to excrete fluid from the system through urine as normal as you would have if you did not uh, if you had functional kidneys so once sugar kills the kidneys and you all know kidneys play a very important role in regulation of blood pressure how when you have low blood pressure the kidneys reabsorb salts and water and blood volume goes up and blood pressure goes up but when you have high blood pressure the kidneys excrete more salt and more water and therefore blood volume falls and blood pressure falls this is explained by the RAS system for those who have done uh, medical stuff. However, if you have failing kidneys, this process will be altered. Therefore, your blood pressure will always go up and it will be unregulated. You will find, you'll find a hard time to regulate it. And now they will start telling you not to eat salt. But yet the cause of kidney problem is not salt, it's the sugar. So you will not eat salt because of what sugar cost you. But they want to blame it on salt. Avoid that. Salt is necessary for even somebody who has hypertension unless you have stage 4 or stage 5 kidney failure because the kidney will still excrete that salt. Another cause of hypertension is on top of the kidneys we have glands that are called adrenal glands and their function is to produce a hormone that is called aldosterone and aldosterone actually plays the most important role in regulation of blood pressure. So if you have chronic blood pressure or increased uh, chronic high blood pressure which is basically hypertension that means a failure in the adrenal glands. And what kills the adrenal glands? Sugar in all forms, seed oils, wheat products, and processed foods are the ones that are responsible for killing your kidneys, for killing your adrenals, and now for atherosclerosis. Those are the three causes of the major causes of hypertension. Others like smoking, like alcohol and all this, this is just going rounds and rounds. But the major things that will cause you an increased blood pressure and hypertension are these three. So how do you reverse hypertension? The same way you reverse Diabetes, the same way you reverse hypertension. The metabolic syndrome, how do you reverse it? Obesity, hypertension, uh, high lipidemia, heart failure, kidney failure, uh, and, 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 and all these chronic conditions. How do you reverse them? Basically, a sugar-free diet, a carbohydrate-free diet. Because sugar, and remember, carbohydrates, they're absorbed as sugar. That's why we call them sugars. So anytime you eat carbohydrates, you cause an insulin uh, spike that will cause you insulin resistance. That is the mother of the metabolic syndrome. So for you to reverse this, drop seed oils. This is for hypertensive people. Drop seed oils, drop wheat products, drop sugar in all forms, including fruits and honey. Drop processed foods, change your cooking oil to saturated or animal fats. Ghee, tallow, butter, cheese. You can use also coconut oil or avocado oil. Then after that, you start healing your system. Drop sugar in all forms. Start concentrating on saturated fats, fatty protein, all types of protein, whether red or white. And also, uh, start fasting. Because fasting heals inflammation. Fasting rejuvenates your kidneys. And fasting also rejuvenates your adrenal glands. Now, once you do that, you are into recovery. So, re recovering from diabetes, obesity, hypertension has to recover, has to start with insulin resistance. And this resistance is the problem. That is the mother of all the metabolic syndrome. So anything, everything I mentioned about diets in this channel is exactly trying to help you recover from diabetes, hypertension, kidney failure, heart problems, weight gain or obesity, and all these metabolic syndromes. So do not ignore it thinking that treating diabetes is different from treating hypertension. They all hail from the same cause, and that is insulin resistance that is coming from a carbohydrate-rich diet. So go on natural carbs, which is basically actually a low-carb diet, but make it a complex carbohydrate. Okay? But if you, you want quick recovery, go on a zero-carbohydrate diet, which is basically a clean keto. High-protein diet, saturated fats, vegetables, and the only fruit has to be an avocado. And then drop all inflammatory foods, and then start fasting. This is a quick way to help you heal your hypertension. Now, on drugs for hypertension, you realize most of these drugs either increase urine flow so that you reduce the blood uh, volume, and these are drugs that are called diuretics. So they increase your, your your urination because they want to lower your blood volume. But if you have been, if you've not, if you're still eating carbohydrates, you're still kidney killing your kidneys, and therefore these drugs, the side effects will be very profound because you are supposed to get fluid and salt out of the kidneys. However, your kidneys are failing because of the carbohydrates that you're eating, so you'll have a problem. Number two, others cause vasodilation. So they are dilating the blood vessel, but are they healing the inflammation that caused the narrowing of the blood vessels? No. And therefore, diets will always come before drugs.